In the gym, we strive for strength. We lift weights to build muscle, to push our bodies to their limits. But what if I told you there was a human species whose natural, everyday strength would dwarf that of even our most elite athletes? This is the reality of the Neanderthal. But were they truly superhuman? The evidence for their incredible power is written in their bones. From the moment their skeletons were first discovered, scientists noted their extreme robustness. Their bodies were fundamentally different from ours. They were shorter, yes, but far more compact and heavily built. Let's start with the obvious. Their bones are thick. Their limb bones, like the humerus and femur, have massive diameters. This isn't just for show. Thicker bones can handle more mechanical stress and anchor larger, more powerful muscles. The points where tendons attached to the bone called muscle insertion sites are pronounced and rugged. This indicates muscles that were not only larger, but also capable of generating immense force. This wasn't the kind of strength for show. It was functional, honed by a life of extreme physical demand. Imagine the daily workout, tracking and taking down multi-ton prey like mammoths and rhinos with closer range thrusting spears. This required explosive power and immense upper body strength. Butchering a carcass without modern tools is a grueling task of slicing through thick hide and tendon. Every day was a test of power and endurance. Their lifestyle built a specific kind of physique. Analysis of their skeletons suggests they had enormous right arms, consistent with repetitive spear thrusting and throwing. Their shoulders and elbows would have been incredibly powerful. Their lower bodies were built for stability and power, not long-distance running. They were built for ambush and power, not persistence hunting across savannas. So, how would a Neanderthal stack up against a modern human? It's a fascinating thought experiment. In a raw contest of strength a grip test, a wrestling match, a test of lifting capacity a male Neanderthal would likely overpower even the strongest modern human athlete. Their muscle mass and bone density were simply on another level, a product of both genetics and a lifetime of ultra-high activity. But this superhuman strength came with trade-offs. That massive, powerful body was incredibly calorically expensive. They likely needed significantly more calories per day than we do just to maintain that muscle mass. It may have also made them less efficient at long-distance travel or running compared to the more gracile Homo sapiens. Calling them superhuman isn't quite right, because they were a different kind of human. Their strength wasn't supernatural. It was a brilliant adaptation to a specific time and place. They were the ultimate Ice Age athletes, engineered by evolution for power and resilience. They weren't invincible superheroes, but in a contest of pure brute force. They would have been the undisputed champions of the Pleistocene.